Hello and good morning. My name is Conrad Robinson. I'm the manager for Jampro Western Regional Office. Welcome to our Business Opportunity Forum this morning, where the focus will be on the global services sector. Um, indeed, this has been a sector that has contributed significantly to the Jamaican economy over the last 15 years. And this morning, the focus is going to be on the linkages opportunity that the sector provides. Uh, so we are encouraging our operators to buy local, and this webinar will be discussing those opportunities. So thank you again, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us, and we have some housekeeping matters that we will share with you at this time. So please be reminded that this webinar is being recorded. All video and audio have been turned off by for participants. If you have questions, please type in the question box below, the Q and A box below. Your questions will be answered by one of the panelists live or responded to in the box. And might I just add, if we are not able to answer all of your questions during this webinar, be sure we will respond to your question via email. No verbal questions will be allowed. Thank you for your kind cooperation. And I look forward to sharing with you and the presenters this morning as we you know, explore the business opportunities that the global services sector provides. And who is better to start this webinar than the president of the Global Services Association of Jamaica, uh, Miss Gloria Henry. And she's going to be looking at the global services sector and the Jamaican economy. The contribution that the sector has been making, is making, and will be making to the Jamaican economy. So Gloria, thank you for joining us this morning, and I now turn over the mic to you. Good morning, everyone. Um, I hope that everybody is seeing my screen. Conrad, let me know if you're seeing my screen. Yes, we are, Gloria. You're good. You're good to okay. go. All right. Thank you, everyone. And let me use the opportunity to thank Conrad and Jampro for the excellent partnership that we have shared uh, in the association over the years and for staging these linkages webinars. Well, webinars since COVID, but prior to COVID, we had seminars. And um, you know, this is an opportunity for us to connect with service providers, to connect with members of the public, and for the opportunities for purchasing local to be shared amongst many others outside of the cluster, the, the global services cluster. So I have a short presentation that I'm going to make today. And um, let me just move to that. So let me just greet all the other panelists and also greet the members who are attending, um, the members of the audience who are attending. I trust that you're having a good day and that everybody is back to, well, we're almost back to post-COVID lifestyles in a lot of ways. So um, I hope you're enjoying yourselves and just living with a purpose. All right. Um, my screen is frozen. I don't know what's going on here. My slides aren't moving. Hmm. Okay. All right. So this is a storyboard, really. I'm just going to talk about the sector, how we recovered from COVID. What are the opportunities, the linkages, the economic impact, and of course, areas of needs. So um, Jamaica, the Business Process Association of Jamaica, rather, we've been in, this is our 10th year, 2012, we're celebrating our 10th anniversary. And we're an industry private sector led body that works cooperatively with a number of local agencies and JAMPRO to, you know, support the growth and expansion of the industry and to provide an enabling environment for the industry in Jamaica. And we sit on many um, pillars. 
strategy and policy research and best practice. And we do that through Outsource to Jamaica, which is one of the platforms that we have launched in the last five years. We support innovation and linkages, which is what is happening here today, investments and business development, branding and positioning talent and workforce. So our three main foundations are engagement, facilitation, and promotion. Now, just a quick glance at GSS Jamaica. Um, for decade, real GDP gross domestic product in Jamaica has been low. Um, growth essentially has been low with you know, comparable economies in the world. And um, since 2015, Jamaica has been on an advanced infrastructure development and on a growth path. And we've seen many new infrastructure that have been put in place. Um, in terms of road networks, um, sewage infrastructure, potable water infrastructure, and building infrastructure. The Development Bank of Jamaica entered the market to support BPO development in 2015, and that has helped us to uh, maintain or to um, change the trajectory, rather, of the sector. Um, since 2015, we've had about 25 thousand jobs, we have seen $27.5 billion invested in 1.4 million square feet of space, and over $5.6 billion have been spent on built out, um, building out of these spaces. So if you are here today, we trust that you would have been one of the beneficiaries from any part of the spend in the last um, seven years. So today we have 92 firms, three of which are inactive but they are spread across the island um, in Kingston mainly, St. Catherine and St. James in Montego Bay. Um, how have we coped and managed since COVID? The growth path that Jamaica was on took a check, a deceleration in 2020 when COVID hit. You would have known that all our various indices were moving in the right direction. Unemployment was low, inflation was low, real GDP was seeing some improvements, and the BPO sector was likewise moving up the value chain and things were looking great. And then COVID came in March. And um, in March, we prepared, we engaged, we collaborate, we communicated, we implemented business continuity strategies. We drafted environmental health COVID-19 guidelines, and we moved towards getting those enshrined in a legal framework. We worked cooperatively to ensure that self-reporting and so on were covered in the Disaster Risk Management Act, and that we were approved as essential services. And um, several of our vendors escalated and joined us as we pivoted to work at home. Um, we suffered a deceleration in June 2020 um, because, of course, some measures that the government had to take. But since August 2020, we have recovered and we are growing. We're maximizing efficiencies. We have continued to maintain a virtual business model, and we continue to recommend to, to record rather significant organic growth amongst our local members in Jamaica to the extent that we have surpassed pre-COVID state and have moved about 30% since that deceleration in June. Um, Jamaica continues to remain very competitive. And this is a jam pro slide that shows, you know, why Jamaica is so competitive. 400 international flights weekly. Well, we're getting back to that place. Um, several airlines, it's more than 40 now. Uh, we are just two hours away from some parts of the world, four hours, nine hours, and 15 hours. And we are a very interconnected country in Jamaica. There are still amazing opportunities in BPO. We are touching knowledge process outsourcing in many ways um, through our global players in Jamaica and through new players that have come on stream since 2015, like KPMG and the Night Fox. And we have entered and are maintaining a strong presence in the ITO that's in um, technology outsourcing seg seg segment of outsourcing. So there are still opportunities globally that we can tap into. 
And analysts are saying that um, this market will reach about $405.6 billion by 2027. And we're seeing an annual growth rate of 8.0. Now, COVID did not deter growth in outsourcing. There are still amazing opportunities for our local providers, as well as for new players that are entering Jamaica. Um, we, we, we shared this slide before, but I think it's still relevant to show that Jamaica is still considered one of the offshore locations that investors look at when they are doing their location site assessments. And that you know, our near shore footprint is still very important still plays a great role in decision making in terms of where jobs are to be placed by customers in um, buyers rather looking for a near shore opportunity. So um, what are the opportunities in linkages, right? Um, provision of outsourced services. Now we are the best at outsourcing services that we ourselves have in-house, um, things like cleaning, things like finance, telecommunication services, utility services, travel and tourism, where we, you know, we utilize these services for um, trainers coming in from the from overseas and for um, clients, new clients that we are hosting. Um, training and recruitment agencies are key to the support and growth of this industry. And headhunting and mass recruiting are common and common services that we procure regularly. Transportation. Transportation is a big, big service in this industry to the extent that it is creating problems for us, though, in some cities where we operate, like in Montego Bay, where you may have seen in recent times where we, you know, the BPO sector came under scrutiny our concerns have been raised that the buses are creating traffic congestion in Montego Bay. So it's a good problem for the bus operators, but certainly a, a hazard or an impediment rather for some persons, commuters who are moving around in the city. And then there is security and ancillary services, on-site protection, screening services, janitorial services. All of those services are services that we buy from local suppliers. Um, we, these are the big ticket items that um, support the economy. Um, telecommunications, of course, our providers, cable and wireless business, Flow, Digicel are the main beneficiaries of the telecommunication services that we buy. And JPS, of course, being a monopoly is the main beneficiary of energy and utility services that we purchase. And the financial services, we run, fortnightly payroll and in some cases weekly payroll and just imagine the fees that are paid to these financial institutions. Um, then there is financing through loans for startups and expansion, um, wealth, wealth and risk management services and maintenance of accounts. These are all services. And then there's the taxes and billions of dollars are paid out in statutory deductions to the coffers of the government on a monthly basis. Now, I just picked four areas to show the economic impact, right? We pay out about 44 billion Jamaican dollars in salaries every single month. Now, do you, sorry, every single year rather. Do you know how much of that is paid to, you can do the math to the um, Heart Trust NTA, to the Tax Administration of Jamaica to the National Housing Trust, right? Um, we spend over $3 billion on transportation. Um, since COVID, we have spent about $2 billion on additional services that would not normally be spent to put in dividers, to um, do extra cleaning and sanitation of um, cubicles and you know contact centers and take temperatures and do recording of temperatures and daily reporting and all of the things that we have been asked to do. And through a special facility, and this is not training generally because we spent billions of dollars in training generally, in-house training, but this is a specialized training that the GSS has provided uh, where we have spent to date about $0.5 billion on upskilling 
members of the workforce within the global services sector. So we have purpose designed spaces that have created amazing opportunities for build out technicians. Before the BPO sector, I mean, there was not a category of workforce that was called build out technicians or build out contractors. But now we have, we have that segment that are constantly working on helping to customize, to create, to design, and to you know, create some of the most beautiful, creatively, aesthetically designed spaces within our BPO centers. And this is just one of them um, that's displayed here. This is a Lorica at 58 Halfway Tree Road. Um, so we have some, you know, we've just showed a few of our transportation providers, Mr. Warrell Selby here, um, who provides transportation in Montego Bay. And we have a few buses here displayed from the BPO transportation company and from a private provider that supports um, HGS. Uh, we are in the space providing corporate social responsibility. We sponsor schools, we sponsor programs, we sponsor corporate runs and walk, we adopt various charities. We have helped to build houses for persons who have lost their homes. We support infrastructure development for schools and we have been actively involved in a number of food drives. So our BPOs are very active in the corporate social responsibility space and all of this involves spending and supporting the domestic economy. Um, these are some testimonials um, in terms of linkages. Um, this one is from Navist, uh, Christine East, um, who's general manager. And really we, we, as you know, we're constantly building out and purchasing office space. And she says, we're no longer a little stationary and office supply firm. I am confidently, I, I can confidently say we have provided over 10,000 seats in the industry. I'm sure it's a lot more now. The company's growth has resulted in acquisition of additional property and warehouse space as we position ourselves for future possibilities. Mr. Selby said we started a contract to pick up five employees at midnight. The contract has been expanded to a transport to transport employees from Montego Bay Free Zone area. The central location downtown. He started with a NOAA bus and now he has a fleet of coaches that support the sector. And then Jason Wright, oh Jason is such a sweetheart. He's one of the many persons that support us that is reliable, efficient and available for our needs. And he operates Red Key mm -hmm. Solutions that support us with CCTV, alarm systems and so on. Now, the providers are not the only beneficiaries that have great testimonials, right? What about the workforce who buys goods and services? When I joined the free zone a few years ago, we used to use our parking spaces to play football and netball. And now we have a challenge. We can't provide enough parking spaces for all the motor vehicles that are parked here at the free zone. We have seen many food services providers that have developed to support the catchment areas in the free zone. And, and in Kingston, Portmore, and all over the place, it's the same story. You know, cars are being sold, new homes are being purchased, people are going back to schools, and lives have been impacted. And I have some testimonials here. The first one is from Alicia Spence, head of department for Omni Near Shore. And she says, it was never my dream to work in the BPO sector. I always thought I was destined for the medical field, but little did I know that entering the BPO sector over 10 years ago would change my life. I started in this sector as a customer service agent and remained in that role for eight months. And since then I've grown from one leadership role to another, namely team lead, supervisor, trainer, operations manager, to now head of department. Thanks to the BPO sector, I have gained experience in recruiting, training and development, contact center operations management and client services. The BPO has offered me the opportunity to return to school and further my education as I am now pursuing my BSc in business and human resource management. Now I know certainly in many, many private and public sector companies, you could not advance to these senior positions without a first degree. 
and see she's in these positions and she's only now just pursuing her bachelor's degree. This other one is from, let me adjust my screen. Oops, oh my. All right, um, the screen, uh, all right. This is a tier two aid and I'm not seeing, I don't know why, let me look for the name because go back to my manual slides because <laughs> I don't know what's going on with my screen there. All right, so this person um, also from Omni Nearshore says that my BPO experience started in February, February, 2012. Wow, okay, I, one minute, please. All right, started in February, 2021 rather. When it began, I had no idea when, what I was getting into or what was to come. And that was just last year. The main goal was to get the experience and make a dollar in my pocket. As the year progressed, many other paths began to light up. I have met amazing people, each within their own story to share and wisdom offered from listening. Working at Omni Near Shore Limited as a chat agent has been a blast. Each day with them is almost an adventure with the many laughs we have together. And even if you are absent, you will be caught up because this is the type of family we have. This is a young man that could probably be otherwise minded. We know how unattached youth are, you know, drawn into activities that some are nefarious activities. And here he is starting his career, pursuing education and balancing work and doing amazing. And I'm sure um, he's going to find opportunities. And this is Mr. Timothy McNarin from um, Omni Near Shore. Uh, we have two more testimonials, and these are persons in Kingston. Uh, Mr. Leon Davis, a senior director, site operations at IBEX. He, his introduction started in financial analytics 11 years ago, right? And he has grown. He says his eyes have been open to career opportunities within the sector. And this was not a job, but a path for growth personally and professionally. And like many of his colleagues, he's been able to purchase his first car, house, and provide good educational options for his children. Not only that, but he has managed to see many other parts of the world and to work in other borders outside of Jamaica. The other one is uh, from IBEX as well, an associate quality director, and um, Shimra, has entered this sector in 2011 as an agent. And after 22 weeks, he was promoted to quality analyst and later ventured into recruiting and training and found that his heart really belonged to quality. So he went back to quality and look at what he's doing. As a quality manager, then two years later, promoted to senior quality manager for all related programs in Jamaica while providing support to Nicaragua. I hope you speak Spanish, Shimra. And the promotion and growth continued where I moved into a new role as Associate Director of Quality with additional presence globally, now including the Philippines, Bohol, mm -hmm. and Honduras. And this is just one person. Um, this, these are just four rather of many person stories within the sector. So the impact, the linkages is not just with the service providers, but the opportunities that have been created to purchase and to invest in local services like housing and motor vehicles and you know school school for themselves school for their children all right so this is landscape of needs that um, i have put together here just to show you where the different areas of needs are um, build out solutions as i said 5.6 billion dollars have been spent on build out um, and these are areas that you can purchase services. Um, BPO operators can purchase services from local providers, structured cabling, cubicles, furniture, you heard from um, Nevis, Foundation for Network, voice and video services, um, closed service TV, closed circuit television, card readers. Card readers are very important within the sector. Um, display solutions and fire safety and so on solutions. Um, for support services and amenities, there's food. I didn't even mention food, but food services is, of course, we have to feed 50,000 persons. Transportation, um, clothing, you know, a lot of people buy branded shirts for their employees. Healthcare, 
Um, many of the larger firms have on-site support for healthcare services, daycare services. Some people are doing that. There's hotels, there's um, novelty items, there's wellness, um, and there's executive accommodation. And of course, then there's managed facility solutions, right? That are also important, such as payroll, such as legal services, such as corporate filing, um, such as employee screening and testing and help desk reporting. So these are just some of the services that are available to, for you to participate. Thank you very much. We are continuing our growth trajectory. We're 50,000 adding to 100,000. We contribute 800 million adding to a billion dollars and we are here to stay. Thank you very much, Conrad and the team. Wow, thank you very much, Gloria. It's amazing how little we know of the impact of the BPO sector, now global services sector on Jamaica. So not just from an economic perspective, but what the sector is doing in terms of, of skilling of workers. Uh, you know, I was just keenly listening to you a while ago and I realized that perhaps the only sector that the BPO sector has not impacted directly is perhaps the mining sector. And, and even that, the, in the mining sector, it does so indirectly through the construction of houses and, and, and all of the other types of infrastructure that goes into the building out of BPO space and so on. It's amazing the, the kind of contribution that the sector is making. And we are grateful for you to share with us this morning. And please, we're asking you to stick around because we're going to be asking our participants to, to be reminded to put your questions in the Q&A box below, right? So you'll see a, a little icon at the bottom of your screen that says Q&A. That's where we want you to put your questions um, that you have for the presenters as they make their presentations this morning. So Gloria, thank you again, but stick around um, because we're going to have you answer some of the questions that will be coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, we at Jumper are very proud. We are very proud to to be partnering with the GSAJ in providing services to the investors within that space. And uh, this morning we have with us Ms. Gail Barrett, who is the manager of the implementation department at Jampro, the project implementation department at Jampro. And uh, she's going to come and she's going to share with us how Jampro supports the BPO sector particularly the investors within that space. So Gail, thank you very much for joining us and I'm handing over the mic to you. Thank you, Conrad. I'm glad to be here this morning to just um, tell everyone about a little department in Jampro called Project Implementation. Project Implementation works strictly, well, mostly with clients of Jampro. Once you're a project with, uh, with, with Jampro, you become a project with Jampro. You're handed over by your sector teams, that would be sector of agriculture, um, BPO, tourism, manufacturing, mining, handed over to, uh, to our unit called project implementation. And we're the ones who are mandated with getting you up and running. Okay. Uh, trying to change my screen here. It's not moving. So Gail, we're not actually seeing your screen. So you, you, you need to share. Um, oh. So I, I'm, I think Gloria has stopped sharing. So you'd probably need to go and share your screen with us. Okay, sorry. I thought it was being shared already. Share. There you go. Okay, are we seeing it now? Are you seeing my screen now? Yes, we are Gail, go ahead. Okay. So as I, as I go on, uh, I'm just trying to move my, um, to the next slide, but it's not moving. Not sure why. Um, hold on one second. It's moving now, thank you. I wouldn't suppress what happened. All right, so as we move on, uh, the project implementation department is charged with the responsibility of ensuring a smooth implementation of investment projects in Jamaica for both local and foreign investors. The team consists of experienced officers who provide a raft of facilitation services to Jampro's clients. So whether your entity is a first time investment project or 
you are a tenured, ten, you've tenured state, meaning that you're uh, been with us for a while, or you're, so, or you're going to be doing something new, we're the ones who help you to become operational. We provide excellent service to our clients. We, well, how we do this is by leveraging our relationships with our government stakeholder agencies. Let me first say that JAMPRO has no approval powers with any government agency for you know, permits and approvals that you may be applying for, for your business operations. But what we do is that we leverage our relationships. We maintain excellent relationships with all these government stakeholder agencies. So that we are able to call on them for anyone who is a JAMPRO client to find out what is happening with the project, if it's stalled for any reason, and to see if maybe, you know, you were not provided full information on the project, that is what we're here to do. To give you full guidance and as what as to what you need to make sure you have all your supporting documents when you're applying for approvals or permits and um, to guide you through the process. So as we move on, how do we support the BPO sector? We support the BPO sector through business facilitation services, advisory services, and business advisory, business environment development. For the um, for business facilitation services, we facilitate meetings. If you're a new company coming in or existing company, and you need a meeting with any government stakeholder agency or the um, or ministry. We provide facilitation services with these agencies and ministries. As I spoke before about leveraging our stakeholder relationships with our government agencies, that's what we do. We troubleshoot issues. If, you're, if you're, you have an issue and you're, you, know, you can't get past it, that is what we're here to do. We're here to find out what the issue is and how best we can move forward to clear that obstacle you're having so your project can become operational. You know, sometimes the thing with um, government agencies, they're not provided clear information and, um, or, or your project may be, maybe they sent, you know, sometimes they send out an email if you're not, for your application, you have not received it. You don't know what is happening with the project because no follow-up has been done by the government agency. That's where we, we come in with our clients. We call all the agencies that you have put, put applications in. If you're having an issue, we find out what the issue is and we clear that obstacle as quick as possible for you. So these are some of the areas that we do deal with troubleshoot client issues, highlighting opportunities for investment. And we move on to our offering of our advisory services guidance on process approvals, due diligence with applications, and strategic interventions. Some of the government agencies we intervene with, it would be Ministry of Labor for work permits and extension of stays, police records uh, for the BPO sector. The police record has to be had uh, as part of their supporting documents for employment, and we intervene um, quite a bit with the police records. As you know, during the pandemic, there was uh, a very difficult time with the police records um, department and um, JAMPRO facilitated quite a few of our clients with having the police records set up specific times for the, for the companies, the BPO companies to uh, have their, their applications processed. So we facilitated in that way with, with um, police records and that is ongoing. That's one of the main things that we do that and work permits. Meeting with government agencies, applications with special economic zone. We also facilitate that process for you. That process can be um, a bit um, overwhelming. So we step in there if you're not um, getting any headway or understanding where current status of your application. We interview there also. There is that incentive that is given for the um, investment sector it's called the productive incentive. Did we have lost your sound? Um, can you check your sound again, please? Thank you. 
Uh, are you hearing me now? Are you hearing me? Just a little better, but I think it still needs some adjustment. Try it Trying it now. Any better? Any That's better? much better. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. So I just ending up by saying that um building and building approvals. Now building approvals, as you know, we have to all building approvals have to go through their Paris municipality, uh, which PIC, the Building Implementation Team, sits on a committee with NECO that reviews all applications that comes in for anything happening across the country. So if we are, and once we're aware that one of the projects are ours, we are there to, um, to um, argue on, on the side of our client for that project. If it's a project that may have a problem, we are, we are firsthand aware of the problem. So we can inform our clients why it wasn't approved at that time and to have the issue um, cleared up in the fastest possible way. As you know, all government agencies do have their processes for applications. So we don't, you know, overstep our, um, our, our role. We don't overstep our role in that process. But what it is, is that sometimes you just don't know or can't find information as to where your, your application stands with any agency, whether it be with, you know, NEPO, Parish Municipality, SEZ, Ministry of Labor, Customs, and so forth and so on. That is where we step in. For this project information also does, um, once a year, we do a seminar. And we have a seminar coming up next week, which, uh, gives you information on government um, online platforms and how it, it's easy for you to manage some of your business on these government online platforms and a platform that will be coming on stream shortly called the National Business Portal for where you'll be able to upload um, applications and for, for building permits and so on. So that would be good to listen to also, which will be next week, Thursday. Business environment development um, is another thing that we do. We add Again, we're losing you again. I think that uh, there's some issue with your internet connection. Um, I'm not sure if you're able to hear us. Um, so, So ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are online, if you can still hear me, I will just sum up for Gail. Um, it seems as if there are some challenges where she is broadcasting from. So John Pro offers a, a, a wide range of services to investors. And, um, and what Gail was trying to indicate at the end was that we offer facilitatory services. And those services include, as she mentioned earlier, um, you know, support to our BPO investors in them liaising with government agencies for various um, permits and, and, and approvals and so on and so forth. We, we support our BPO uh, investors as well by, um, you know, through helping them with HR related matters to find employees for their various companies. Um, we, we support them again through, uh, you know, assisting them with customs issue, JC's issue, you know, any kind of issue that you're having in the operation of your business, I would recommend that you touch base with Jampro. Gail and her team, they'll be quite happy to help to assist you in terms of dealing with some of those challenges. So Gail, I'm not sure if you're hearing me, but we just want to say thanks for having shared with us this morning. And we appreciate the fact that um, you were able to, you know, to, to, to highlight some of the, the, the support that Jampro provides for uh, its clients. So thank you again, Gail. We want you to stick around as well because um, in the event that we have questions for you, we would like for you to answer those. And just for a reminder for our panelists, 
I mean, for our participants, that you, we're asking that you place your questions in the Q and A box, that little icon that looks like a little dialog box um, that says Q and A, write your questions there. We've actually seen two questions over there so far. So we're encouraging you to put your questions in there for the panelists, and we will ensure that we have them answered during this webinar. If not, we will de definitely respond via email to you. So ladies and gentlemen, we could not have a webinar without having an operator speaking to us about you know, their experience in terms of buying supplies locally and what it is that they are looking for when they are engaging a vendor in that space. And so this morning we have just Janicia Wainwright from ITEL. And you know, I am so proud of ITEL because ITEL, I want to refer to them as a local company with an international reach. And um, they are really, you know, at one of the jewels in the crown of Jamaica, as far as the outsourcing business is concerned. Um, they have grown from this little spot and they are now in several countries across the world. And I think you're near about 4,000 employees now, if, um, if you can correct me, Janicia, when you come on. Um, but definitely proud of ITEL. And we are very happy to have you with us this morning, sharing in our webinar. And so I'm going to hand over the mic to you now, uh, Janicia. Thank you, Conrad. And th good morning, everyone. Um, let me share my screen. Great, we're seeing your screen and you're good to go. Awesome, thanks. All right, so my name is Janicia Wells Wainwright. Sorry, I'm trying to get to my next page. So my name is Janice Wells Wainwright, Head of Projects. I also do procurement for ITEL. I've been with ITEL for over four years now. Um, a little bit about ITEL. So as Conrad um, introduced ITEL, just wanna go into more specific and make this correction on the numbers of employees we have. So ITEL is the largest locally born BPO in the Caribbean. We provide customer experience across multiple channels and industry for mostly North American clients. We have 11 facilities across nine countries in Latin America and the Caribbean and North America. So we do have 6,000 employees, 50% of that is in Jamaica. Um, recently, we launched our new facility in Kingston, 80,000 square feet. And in last year, we launched into three new geos, currently building out sites across six of our countries. So the locally, locally sourced products. Um, most of our products are from sourced overseas. However, the ones that we do, our top three categories are bathroom products, cleaning supplies, office stationaries, and a few other items that didn't meet this list here. Key factors for selecting vendors. So what ITEL looks for when selecting vendors. Um, we look at compliance with relevant standards and certifications. We look at price, quality, ability to consistently fill, fulfill order quantities on time, delivery, availability and quality of customer support channels, payment terms, ease of doing business, for example, digital technology to enable online ordering and payments. Okay. So the ideal vendor is a true partner. What does that mean for us, our desired um, vendors? Excellent communication clear, timely, and very proactive. That's what we look for. We also look for vendors that are proactively use, using our order history data to help us avoid stock outs. So as you know, 
our main focus is not procurement, but providing customer service to our clients. So we do look to our vendors to help us in that avenue to avoid us being stuck out. Able to scale up to our growth, um, understanding our near-term plans and prepare to meet our needs. Help us to provide help us with unforeseen risk and continue to help us with competitive pricing. Meaning that we, even though you're one of our vendor, we don't want you to be complacent. We, we would like you to control pricing. So this month you have a new price. If there's gonna be a price increase, you inform us so that we can prepare for it. So we look for that true partner in, in terms of that effective communication. So what our experience have been so far with local vendors? So mostly it is satisfactory. So ITEL has been willing to accommodate some who had rare instances in not meeting our needs. And there are instances when we quickly move on from vendors once show signs of not able to meet our needs. So I just wanna call out before I close out here that we do provide source, we do source locally through our general contractors for our site build out. So construction material, et cetera. Some of those that we do procure locally through our supply or contractors. So this is a short slide. So um, thank you guys. If there's any questions, um, please put in the chat. I'm available to answer those. Thank you very much, Janicia. And um, you know, it's, it's important that we recognize that the BPO sector um, holds a wide range of opportunities for local suppliers. And I tell this testament to that. Um, and you know, I don't know if how many suppliers we currently have on this webinar, but it's important for you to take note of what it is that these companies are looking for when they are partnering with a prospective vendor. It's very important that you present yourself as a professional in terms of this space, um, because it is very competitive and it is the vendor that is able to satisfy the requirements of the BPO company that will get that contract. So thank you again, um, Janicia. Uh, we really appreciate your input. And I'm gonna ask you just to stick around for a minute, just in case we have any questions for you. Um, and, um, and so we, we will pay attention to the Q and A box. Ladies and gentlemen, again, if you have questions for our panelists, we're gonna ask you to note those in the Q&A box and I see the box filling up. So I'm just gonna jump right into the Q&A at this point and, um, and then shoot the questions as they, they come in. And I think this first question is, would be for you, Gloria. I would like to join the BPO sector. How do I do so? Um, is this person looking for a job or are they looking to be a provider of services? That's a very good question. Well, I noticed that a person went on to say, I think the person is looking for a job because they went on to say that um, she's unemployed right now and have no experience in the BPO sector, but would love to learn and asking how to join. Okay, so so there are several ways that you know you can join the sector if you're looking for a job. Hard Trust NTA is one of our partners and they have been designated to train and recruit 24,000 persons over a four-year period. They're already working um, on this since last year or the year before. So, th so that's one way. Um, you can also look th go through Caribbean jobs. We, normally there are a lot of jobs advertised on that platform in the daily newspapers as well, local newspapers. If you're in Montego Bay, the Western Mirror, otherwise the Observer and the Gleaner. Um, and then there is a platform that was recently launched called Icon Work, where you can go on Icon Work and create your profile. And you can put yourself on the ATS system there to be considered for a job. 
All right, thanks, Gloria. Um, I see where our question is. Uh, could the slide with the profile of the ideal uh, service provider be shared again? Um, be reminded that the session is being recorded and we will email the link to the session to you as well. So you will have access to that slide um, you know, when you get that, that link. Just a reminder to those of you who are on this webinar, you have not yet filled out our call for services. Um, we're going to be putting that link in the chat. So if you're a service provider, if you're a BPO operator, and you have not yet filled out this call for service, we're going to ask you to go to the chat and look for that link and connect to that link and make your request known. We will match you accordingly at the end of the webinar. Okay, so again, if you're a BPO operator, a service provider, you have not yet filled out the, the document for call for service, we're putting that the link in the chat as I speak, we're going to ask you to go over there, click on that link, fill it out, and we will match you afterwards. All right, so real quick question again, um, I would like to know how to source clients. I'm not sure if that one is for you, Gloria. Um, the person is asking, how can they source clients? You're muted, Gloria. Yes, yeah, sourcing clients is a big question that we get um, asked regularly. And um, usually the, this is done through analysts and um, professional advisors in the US and in the markets from which you're seeking to source. Uh, we recently um, signed an agreement with Global Equations that offers, that has a platform that provides that kind of services. Anna Palma has worked collaboratively with Jampro for many years in the Jamaican space. He knows the market space very well. And, and so there is an arrangement there that can help you to connect um, with, with the professionals who can assist with that kind of service. Thank you, Gloria. Janicia, I have a question for you. Um, I hope you'll be able to answer this question. It's a very important question and it says this. How does your procurement practices align with, um, with your No Plastic is Fantastic campaign? Sure, good question. So currently what we do in our site build out, we install water coolers and we provide bottles for our staff so that eliminates um the use of procuring water bottles um, on site that's one of the um that's one of the direction that we go into the no plastic is fantastic so we do have a rule to at work where you try not to to use as much plastic as possible so, so, so ITEL is being environmentally responsible. We applaud you. Most definitely. That, that, that's very Most good. definitely. We, we applaud you. We applaud you. Um, Gloria, I think this one is also for you. Um, is there a need for freight forwarders in the BPO sector? And I actually just answered to say yes. Oh, okay, there you is, did. Um, there is a need. Um, there are, I mean, BPOs import a lot of stuff from overseas. The equipment to build up materials. So either through the vendors who are working on their behalf or directly they use freight forwarding services. Okay, great. So as I mentioned earlier, there's the only sector that I can think of that perhaps the BPO sector does not impact is mining or <laughs> mining. And I've said that they do so indirectly. But yes, I, um, it, the BPO uh, companies do require the services of freight forwarders um, from time to time. There's a question here. I'm not sure if it's for us on this, on this uh, web, but I'll just put it out there. Um, the person says, good morning. My name is Karante, and I am the owner of Online Jobs Agency. I would like to know how to reach the attention of the government in terms of helping persons to get jobs. That's an interesting one, right? So we would direct them to the Ministry of Labor, I think. Um, and that's where we would say, um, uh, Courtney, the Ministry of Labor in Jamaica would perhaps be the best place for you to, to connect with in terms of your question. 
All right, so we're gonna go again as a representative, and this is from Verika, as a representative of the training community, engage in the one year supervisory training. The question is being asked about the kind of certificate that will be given to the participants who complete the training. The explanation is given of it being a customized certificate, but this is not clear to persons. They seek answers as to the alignment with TBET levels, whether three, four, five, et cetera. Uh, this sounds more like a, a question for heart. I'm not sure if Gloria, at this point, you'll be able to answer this question, um, but it's out there. You know, the certificate that people get from the training that they receive from heart. Yes, um, I don't have the answer. The only thing I would say is that all the programs, they're, they're, they're certified and they're heart certified. So um, it's a question I can escalate to Kanisha to see where it falls in terms of the TVET levels. Um, but um, it's a good question and it's something that I will definitely follow up with. All right, thank you, Gloria. So again, ladies and gentlemen, if you have not yet filled out that call I, for service doc, I'm sorry, sorry Conrad, I yes. would say to Renicia because she's gonna have to get her answer to make contact with um, Arlette Archer Campbell at aacampbell at bpiaj.org to get your answer. All right, thanks, Gloria. Can you type that in the chat just so that the person will have the information? And whilst you're doing that, Gloria, I, I see a question here for you. Not sure how you're going to be able to answer this one. A question for Gloria. Is there a link for global equations? Um, I don't have it. I'm going to have to get that link. All right, so I'll put in the answer there for um, to reach to reach Arlen. Um, I mean, if you do a search for global equations, but let me just quickly check on my computer. So while Gloria is doing that, I just want to remind um, those of you who are on the webinar, if you are a BPO operator, a service provider, there is a link in the chat that we would like for you to go to and to fill out that questionnaire. It will help us to be able to do the matchmaking once we have ended the, the webinar. So again, there is a link provided in the chat. We're gonna ask you to go over there, click on that link, fill out the document um, so that we'll be able to match you accordingly at the end of the webinar. All so, right, I, I will have to provide the link later on because Arlet is in training um, now. So again, for that same email that I put in, you can let me just put an a, a, a contact there that you can see, get the answer. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Gloria. Thank you very much, Denicia. Thank you very much, Gail. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us this morning for our Global Services Sector webinar, Making the Link, Buying Local. It was a pleasure I'm sharing with you the wealth of information about the BPO sector, the impact that the sector is having on the Jamaican economy. And we look forward to more people engaging in this sector. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the rest of your morning. My name is Conrad Robinson, and it was a pleasure being your host. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you, Conrad. Thank you. Enjoy a great event. Thank you. Thank you, Conrad.